Hi, my name is Heather and today I'm going to show you how to draw your own 3D layered mandala and create an SVG that you can bring into Cricut Design Space. I've been trying lots of different vector apps for the iPad. It's been so hard to find one that does everything right. I came across this vector Q app. I was so surprised that it drew really well. It doesn't add too many anchor points. It traces everything you drew really well and I don't have any complaints. So this app is free for you to use it and create your files and everything, but then eventually to export your files, you have to buy it, but it's only $5.99. That's awesome. So this is the app that I'm going to use today. And there are a lot of specific steps in this. I'm going to make a reference sheet and I'll link to it in the description so that you can reference it and you can just easily go through the steps. So let's get started. So when we first open up the app, we get this screen and you wanna go to the projects gallery and you'll see it's blank because I don't have any projects right now, but there's a little new button down here. So go ahead and click the new button and then I'll just pick square just for the heck of it. Since it's in vector, the size doesn't really matter. So when you first open it, you're gonna have this menu up here and you have some options. This is the edit menu, so you can do all kinds of things with the object or set some things for the document. Like when you first open the document, it might have a checkered background. So just go to dock here and then you can set the different backgrounds. If we close that, then we have the options for the tool we have. This is our layers panel right here. And we have the appearance so we can set all of our colors and stuff. And then over here is the tools. When we design our mandala, we're going to start with the front layer and then work our way towards the back. I'm going to grab my brush. We can look at our layers. So let's keep that open so we can see all of our layers. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our tool right here. You can be on the brush. You can mess around with that. That's gonna be where it like, gets thicker and thinner. And that actually is really cool. But for this project, I'm just going to use just the same thickness the whole time, which will be the pencil. And by the way, you can't double tap to undo in this app, so you just have to click undo right there. So I'll grab the pencil and then this makes it all just one width. And we'll be able to set the size right here so you can just click and drag up or down to change the size. The other thing is the smoothness, which you can mess around with that. So it'll like smooth out your line for you. If you have it, you know, higher versus lower, it'll smooth it out less. Then we want also to set the color. So if we go to appearance, then you can pick whether you want like the RGB, CMYK, hue, saturation, lightness, then just pick whatever color you want. Now you do have the fill and the stroke. With the brush, it's actually gonna use the fill color. So we would change the fill color to change the color of the brush. So if you feel like you're changing the color and it's not changing what the brush looks like, I've done that before. And that's because I was on stroke. So you have to make sure that you're on fill and you're changing the color in the fill and that's gonna change it for the brush. Those are the things before we draw that we wanna set. And now we can start drawing our first layer. I'm gonna go with a simple sunflower design. And for my first layer, I'm just going to do the circle in the middle of the flower. I'm gonna pick a brown. Um, let's do like a dark brown on the top. I think that would look neat. And then I'll close that. We could draw the circle if we wanted, but if you wanna have a perfect circle, you can click on the shape tool and then you'll need to go up here to where it says tool shapes and make sure you have circle selected. And then we can draw our circle. Of course, we had the fill color set. So actually let's go to appearance and actually change it. So whenever I make a new color, I like to press this little plus sign so that we have it to use later. So let's go to stroke and set the stroke and pick brown and then go to the fill and give it no fill. And you can also change the width of your stroke here. Now I wanna go back to my brush. I wanna draw in some details. I have to make sure these are set right with the brush. So I have the brush and I'm going to do fill of brown and then no stroke. Okay, and that's good. Let's go ahead and draw some cool details here. Mm -hmm. 
And if you find that you do want to edit some of these, then it's actually really easy. You can just click this little tool down here and then click on your line and click your anchor point right here and just move it. And then these handles you can move around for your curve. So a lot of these are just like Affinity Designer and Illustrator. Some of the things that are really take getting used to is more like the undo and like whether you have things selected and setting the appearance and stuff. After you're done drawing a single colored layer, then you're going to want to take everything and convert it from lines. See, these are lines that have a special appearance set to them. You want to convert it from lines to shapes so that it doesn't need the appearance to tell it how thick it is. It'll just be a shape that's that thick. Hopefully that makes sense. So you want to grab everything, click these three lines, go to Edit Paths, Outline Stroke, and as you can see, now the lines actually go around everything. So they're all shapes. So they're all separate shapes right now. So the next thing we're going to do is go up to Edit, go to Object, click this little Combine Shapes tool here, and now you can see that it's all one shape. The little lines aren't separate from the circle. It's all one shape. The next step is we're going to want to duplicate this layer. Each layer below this one needs to include this one. And you'll see what I mean once we do it. So we're basically going to duplicate and add to it every time. Duplicate and add. So find this layer in the layers palette. Make sure you click on it. Click the duplicate button. So now we have two of them. Lock the layer above because that one we're not going to make any more changes to it. So we're going to lock it. Click the little lock. Then we're going to grab the select tool. Make sure your new layer is selected. Then you can select everything. Now we're going to change the color to whatever color we want underneath this one. I'm going to do a lighter brown underneath this one. I'm going to go to appearance. I'm going to pick a lighter brown, kind of like this. We can look at this box and see what it looks like. I'm going to add that as a new color. I'm going to go to the layers. If we turn the top layer off, we can see the one underneath and that's the new color. Now we're going to add more details or fill it in if we want basically whatever we want to do. I'll grab my brush tool, make sure it's drawing right, yep. And I'm just going to draw on this layer. And you'll see that it always is going to go underneath because we're on the layer that's underneath that top one. So this is basically what the layer underneath is going to look like. So you can add kind of a shadow, like just to the left or just to the right, or you can do both sides like that. And you can also add more details. So we could do like smaller lines in here if we want. You can really have fun with this and just be creative. And now we can hide the layer above it so we can look at this one. Let's go ahead and finalize this layer. So remember the steps. First, you're going to use your select tool, select everything, click the three lines, edit paths, outline stroke, go up to your object and combine shapes. Then we're going to make sure this layer is selected, duplicate it, lock the layer that's above. So now we have this one to work with. And with this one, we're going to make it our new color. So I'm going to go to appearance and change the color and I think I'll do black because I'm pretty sure I have black cardstock. Now we can go to our layers and we can hide the one above it so that we can see this one. Now for this layer what I kind of want to do is just have it filled in black like a complete silhouette of the circle. Now there's a special way to do that. I'm going to hide these top two layers so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab the select tool. I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to click the three lines, edit paths, break apart. So this makes it so that they're all just shapes and none of them are holes. We still have everything selected. So let's go to edit and this same one that we did before, the combined shapes. And now we have a nice silhouette. So if we go to layers and we show our other ones, then this is nice and filled in. It might also look cool to have the black one actually come out a little bit too. So I'm just going to size this bigger. 
Now we follow on with our next layer. We make sure we have the bottom layer selected. I'm going to use the select tool, select everything, duplicate, lock the one above, and you may need to scroll down here. Make sure we have the one underneath selected, and we'll change the color. So I'm going to go to appearance, and this is where I want to start doing my flower petals. So I'm going to do a yellow, and let's add that color. Now we can grab our brush tool and make sure that works good. We can go ahead and start drawing. And if you want to test it, you can always turn these layers off so you can see what it'll end up looking like. Here's my flower petals, but if you do want it to be more exact and like kind of a little more symmetrical, you could just draw the one flower petal and then grab it, click these three lines here and click duplicate. And then this is gonna duplicate just the element rather than the whole layer. So then we can click this little circle right here to rotate it. And now we have two flower petals. And we could just even do that again with the two. Click the three lines, duplicate, rotate. Of course, it's not exactly symmetrical, but it definitely gives it a more cohesive appearance. There is my outline. I'm going to go to my brush, and I'm just going to continue adding some details. Now I am done doing my top layer for the sunflower petals. Just like with the other ones, we want to first hide these top layers so we can see. I'll grab my select tool and grab everything. Click the three lines, edit paths, outline stroke. Go up here and click the combined shapes. After doing combined shapes, I can see that I do have some little specks right here. So those would actually get cut and we don't want those to get cut. There's a couple different things we can do. We can either use the brush tool and brush over it and then combine everything again and go through all that. Or you can grab your little node selection tool. First you can click everything so you can see everything and then click the little node and click delete. But you'll have to make sure you do that for all these little nodes. Another way you can do it that's really easy is with your node selection tool just go like this and select all the nodes but you do want to make sure you don't accidentally get a node in there that you need. So you only want to go around the nodes that you want to delete and then click delete. And now we're going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to select the layer, duplicate, scroll down. We're going to lock the layer above and with the layer below, click on it to select it, change the color. So I'll go to appearance and I'm going to pick a darker yellow. So a little more like orangey and we can go to our layers and turn off the top one so we can see the difference. Oh, and it didn't change. So you know what that means? I didn't have it selected. So with my select tool, I got to make sure I have it selected. And then now I can just click on that little swatch that I made. So now we can hide that and there's the difference. So with this one, I'm going to grab the brush and make sure I have that bottom one selected and we can show all of the top ones. And I did want to show you one other technique you can do. If you want everything outlined, then one thing you can do is with this new layer, grab your select tool, select it, hide these so we can see what we're working with here. Go to appearance, go to stroke and Put the stroke on and make it the orange color. If we click away and show this layer, you can see that it has a stroke. We can make the stroke bigger too. Again, we got to make sure this is selected. As long as those layers are locked, they won't get selected. And then I'm going to make the stroke bigger. See, like that looks pretty cool. Once we do our outline stroke, then that'll just turn into the shape. Although there is a catch because it's a little tricky. So let's go ahead and do the outline stroke now so I can show you. So if we grab all this and we do the three lines, edit paths, outline stroke, you might think it's good, but if we go to our layers and we hide these other ones, see what happened? It didn't get the in-between part. It's only the stroke. It's not the shape. And I'm not sure why it does that, but it's a really easy fix. All we have to do is grab the layer above it, duplicate it again. So just like we did before and then show it. So I'm going to 
make sure this layer is unlocked and the other ones are locked so I can select it. Of course, I could also just go like this, but a lot of times I accidentally move it when I do that. Then we're gonna make it orange for the fill. So now they're all shapes, but we just need to have both layers unlocked and then select all of it. And then we will go to the object and combine them. Now, if that was confusing, which I understand it could have been, there was a lot of stuff going on in there, you can just draw in your outlines like I did with the first yellow one. So anyways, oh, and then because we combined those two, this layer is now blank and we can delete it, which is this little layer delete button up here. So if I have this selected, I'll just click that to delete it. So let's go ahead and draw some more on this one. I'll just add some more little fun details. Now I'm done with those details, so I'm just going to do one more layer. I'm going to, of course, go to my layers palette, make sure I have this layer selected, grab my select tool, select everything, click the three lines, and edit paths, outline stroke. We can also turn off the ones above it so we can see what it looks like. So here's our shape, and we can go to edit, object, and combine and here's our shape. And if we zoom in, we can see this little blue speck right here. So I'll go ahead and grab my select tool and delete those. That seems to be the only offending little speck. Now turn the rest of these guys on and I'm gonna do the last layer. So that one I'm gonna do it as a silhouette layer. So let's go ahead and grab the one on the bottom here. Make sure we have it selected and select it. And then we're going to duplicate, just like before. And then I'll lock the one above it. And then this one on the bottom, first I'm going to want to make it a darker orange. So let's go ahead and pick a darker orange here. And then I'm going to click the three lines, edit paths. And remember, to make it into a silhouette, we're going to do break apart. And then we're going to go up to edit and combine it all. So now we have a nice silhouette. I also want to make it outline too. So if you remember that once we do the outline, we're going to also need a duplicate because it's only going to convert the outline. So let's just grab this layer and duplicate it now. And then we can go ahead and add our stroke. So I'm going to go to appearance, stroke, click the stroke on. Maybe we want it to be a little bit thicker than that. Now let's make sure we grab both and click the three lines, edit paths, outline stroke. And if we hide these other ones, now you can see we have the silhouette and the stroke. So we're just gonna combine them into one shape. And there we go, we have a nice big silhouette. This layer now has nothing on it, so I'll just delete it. And let's turn everything on. We can export this as an SVG. And you will have to upgrade to the paid version for $5.99, so you're able to export as an SVG. If you don't upgrade, you can still save it as a file, but you just won't be able to export it as an SVG. But you will have your work saved in the program. Let's go ahead and click on Share. We're going to pick SVG. I'll do the Files one, and I'm just going to save it to my files. And I'll give it a name, click Save. And now we're ready to bring it into Cricut Design Space. And let's upload, browse files. Okay, we're gonna give it a name. And here is our mandala. So if we go to our layers, we can see we have these different cut layers. So that's perfect. The good thing about this is you have it as an SVG file. So you can send it to people for them to make it. You can sell them on Etsy. So you can make these out of your original art and then sell them on Etsy or whatever you want. So that's super exciting. So now you can go ahead and go through the process of cutting them out from pieces of paper, which you can find tons of tutorials on how to do that. You just cut them out on the different sheets of paper and then you just glue them together. I would love to see your original designs. So, you know, feel free to email me at heather at heathercash.com because I would just love to see it. I get really excited when people do cool things with their art like this. Have fun with it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video. 
so I know to make more videos like this. If you have any requests of something that you would want to create and you don't know how to do it, mention it in the comments or send me an email and I would be happy to make a tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!